One D and D. Will this be the end of Dungeons and Dragons Ed editions? Like, this is what Wizards of the Coast is saying: is that there is no longer going to be any kind of Ed edition. Uh, they are trying to avoid an Ed edition war. And every time there is a new book that comes out, new core books, there's a a war between those who uh, like the idea of having changes and those who don't want the changes and want to stay with the old thing. Okay. So will this actually be the end of um, D&D Ed Editions? No. It's been said by Wizards of the Coast every time the game is reprinted. Okay, every single time Wizards of the Coast has done this, they've always said this is the game to rule them all. This is, this is, the, this is the only game there will be. Um, and of course the concept of revisions has been discussed and usually highlighted but this is essentially marketing propaganda. It's normal process. It's nothing new. They've done it when we were dealing with the version three of the game. They did it with 4E, and they are doing. They did it when we were getting, leading into 5E, and they're now doing it with uh, 1D and D, which is v- v- basically the um, the, th- the sixth ver- version um, officially. But actually, there's probably about 12 or 13 versions of the game, uh, ultimately in the end. There are a lot of game mechanics, if you haven't noticed, that are changing. Like from 5e, you can see that there's actually been quite a bit of change. What is essentially the same, though, which you need to take into consideration, is that the d20 or 20-sided dice roll mechanics are essentially remaining the same. They are at their core. You have attack rolls, you have saving throws, okay, and then you have ability checks. And they've always existed in some form. The skill check is just another type of ability check. That's all it is. Okay, so skills ha- certainly came into the game later on. But in terms of the history of the game, those things have essentially stayed pretty much the same. We may have dealt with them differently, but they were always kind of there. Now, this is most certainly going to be the sixth version of the game. It's not 5.5. I can assure you that Tasha's Cauldron of Everything was 5.5. This was testing the waters. It was um, put out as being a a rule expansion or adjustment that was optional. But truthfully, it was not optional because as you can see, they are hard baking and have been since they put it out, hard baking it into every book that they now publish. So 5.5 has been and gone. We are now moving into a completely new animal. Now, is that a bad thing? Um, Well, I think you might find that 1D&D might actually come up with some better basic game mechanics. Now, this is my opinion, um, and I will present my case, but I think you might find that you might get some better basic game mechanics. Now, do I think that how they deal with races and backgrounds and classes is going to get better? Not necessarily at all, because they are following the codified system which sells money. The more rules you make, the more you can sell to a consumer. And so that's what they're doing. And they've kind of been doing that from the very get-go. This is how Wizards of the Coast works. And frankly, um, TSR would have done exactly the same thing. In fact, they did because they had released Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Okay, so codifying the game is something that has been going on from the very get-go. It certainly wasn't necessarily something that Dave Arneson was um, uh, wanting to adopt, but it's certainly something that um, Gary Gygax was all for, and he saw the value of doing it because it would make more money. Now, everybody else coming after that are just jumping on the same bandwagon. Um, Now, the normal playtest cycle for Wizards of the Coast is is actually two weeks. This is the kind of time frame they gave us for the basic rules and the monster manual when we were dealing with D&D Next, okay? So you would get it, you would be expected to try and test everything they gave you, which was usually far too much, in two weeks, and then they would collect data. The good thing in this case, now that it's public, is they have actually allowed you two weeks to collect the data. Often we had less than a week to collect data when we were alpha playtesting before behind closed doors while nobody could actually see what we were up to okay uh that's my experience as part of the dungeons and dragons next alpha play test not the beta test the beta test was public the alpha play test was a product of closed doors and you not everybody was invited 
I got roped into it because I had a mate who got very friendly with Mike Mills and so therefore I wound up part of this process and I was running a lot of games at the time and um, I was happy to test it all out uh, because well kind of kind of anyway so that's that aspect of the testing in terms of ed editions this has always been going on the reason that the Alpha, the, 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 the public testing now for 1D&D &D has now come out is probably because right up from the beginning of the year they've had private play, play testers working through what they want to actually release. They probably had a basic idea of what they were going to do. They did some testing behind closed doors. They said, okay, now we're ready to see what the public thinks. At this point... What we are dealing with is a play test, which is not a true play test. It's not like we're just starting at the ground roots. It's a marketing play test. Okay. Uh, so what does that actually mean? That means, and this was actually very much the case I found with the alpha play test, and that is um, the current play test material is, it's not a true play test because what, uh, and Wizards of the Coast does this a lot, like they, it's not, it's not uncommon, it's, it's, new for, it's not new for them at all. Uh, what they've already done is they've set out their path, they pretty much know what they want, and now they are testing it. They are going to make adjustments, they're going to make adjustments based on feedback, and uh, that's more for marketing. Can they sell this to the public and they will be happy and they won't diverge any more than they have? And so the only feedback that will be effective with regard to this, since it's a marketing um, play test rather than a true game advancement play test, although there are aspects to that, not all of it, but certainly there are some, um, your voice needs to be loud and it needs to be negative. If you aren't loud enough and you're not negative about something, then it probably won't change. Okay, if your voice is loud and it's positive, good lord, um, like how many times can you slam the door? Okay. So um, even though somebody's slamming the door in my house, uh, Wizards of the Coast hasn't actually completely slammed the door in your face with regard to their Dungeons and Dragons rules. If you make enough noise and it's negative, they will reconsider, okay? If your voice is very small and it's not negative, then they will probably leave it alone. That's generally how uh, Wizards of the Coast marketing works with regard to anything that they do. Uh, the game, is this game actually going to be backward compatible? Okay, so, well, no, not really. Um, in, in a way it is, and in a way it isn't. Uh, the game of 1D&D &D and whatever you get in 2024 will be as backward compatible as any other edition of Dungeons & Dragons, except potentially 4E. 4E is probably a little bit hard to go backward compatible on. Uh, there's way too much you need to adjust. Um, so what that really means, that's the theoretical side of things, what it really means is no, uh, whatever you get is not going to be backward compatible uh, without major adjustments. Uh, now even the adventures won't be completely backward compatible because they won't be able to deal with the power level. You'll have to adjust monster, uh, monster abilities, you'll have to switch them out. Uh, not only that, you'll have to change the number of monsters, you'll probably need to make adjustments to how they work to actually challenge players when you're playing older pre-published adventures put out by Wizards of the Coast. All of your race stuff, all of your um, character stuff, all of your background stuff is going to be obsolete because there'll be so many changes taking place that they won't marry up. So yes, the good thing is you'll find that all of the fluff that you have, all of your campaign guide fluff is backward compatible because all of the stuff that's ever been put out that was fluffy uh, and was law-like is always backward compatible. You can use it or not use it, and uh, you don't have to worry about game rules. That's the great thing about law. So does that answer the question with regard to is this going to be the end of the editions? Absolutely not.